OK, welcome back, everybody. So the next session is going to be some sort of quick fire lightning talks. I was going to, um, because many people are not familiar with what these are, I was going to explain them. But I think they're best explained by example. And that way, we have some hope of staying to schedule. These are very quick five minute rapid fire talks. We're going to hold questions on these to the end. And Lawrence and co are collating them. But if you want to make notes and if you can think of a question, there's a collective spot where we'll have questions on the end of the lightning talk session. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Simon Rycroft, who is talking on, I think, Scratchpad Showcase, I think it was. Simon. Yeah, A, a deliberately uh, vague uh, presentation title. So I could uh, pretty much craft this yesterday and uh, talk about pretty much what I wanted. So as Vince has just introduced me, I'm Simon Rycroft. I've worked on the Scratchpads project since uh, it's pretty much since uh, conception 2007. Uh, it, the Scratchpads uh, started at the Natural History Museum, uh, funded by uh, the Edit project, which was a European uh, FP6 funded project. Uh, it's had a number of people work on it over the year, but uh, over the years, sorry. Uh, but uh, the, the main people now uh, include myself, Vince, Dave Roberts. Uh, and a number of other programmers and uh, support staff that you see there. Uh, as mentioned earlier by, uh, by Vince, uh, the scratch pads are funded by uh, Vibrant and, and also a, a smaller amount of funding by uh, the NERC funded eMonaco project. Uh, both of these projects uh, have in their sort of uh, conceptually, uh, they, they both believe in being committed to open source, open science, and sharing their data with the wider community. Uh, I was originally asked actually to talk about uh, specifically about the Yankee site, uh, which I wasn't too keen on because I didn't really know that much about it. Uh, but it turns out actually I do know quite a bit about it because actually it's one of the best used and probably one of the best example scratch pads that we have. So I'm just going to give you a quick demo of uh, some of the key features of uh, scratch pads. And, and in this instance, it's uh, scratch pads 2. Uh, so the front page of the Anki website uh, just gives you a, a nice brief introduction to the to the site and some of the content that exists on there. Uh, it's kind of intended to be a, a slightly media rich but a nice introduction to the to the site. Uh, this site uh, is one of the few sites that we have where um, just by clicking on the top right there you can see that you can switch the language. Uh, in this case. Uh, Eli, the uh, maintainer of the site, is actually paying for translations of the site into, uh, I've got a note of this somewhere because I can't actually read what that says, but I think it's uh, Thai and uh, Indonesian and also Chinese. Uh, I can go on. Uh, the main uh, uh, feature of the many of the scratch pads is sort of a taxonomic backbone. Uh, on, on this site, uh, Eli has a large uh, taxonomy that you can see there on the left-hand side. And here I've highlighted uh, one particular taxa and uh, shown what is a, a tax on page. And in this case, specifically the maps page. Uh, here you can highlight uh, a number of species have been uh, uh, added to the site, or a number of specimens, should I say, sorry, have been added to the site and they've been geolocated. You can also see there a little bit of uh, GBIF data around uh, uh, South America. By clicking on one of those uh, points, we can then highlight the individual specimen record. And then by clicking on the, the specimen record itself, I can, I can go to the actual full record and see the full data about that. Uh, another key feature of the site is the image galleries. Uh, here you can see uh, the main gallery page where we've got uh, a number of uh, uh, illustrations that Eli's added to the site. If, for instance, I wasn't interested in illustrations and I was interested in more in photographs, I could click uh, there on the, the left-hand side, the link at the very bottom of the screen, uh, which is what we call a facet. Clicking on that will then filter all of the results down and just show me the, the images on the site. I can then click on an individual image and uh, see the full details about that image. Uh, back to one of the taxon pages, and here we've got... Uh, a description of uh, Campanotus sexgotatus. Uh, forgive the pronunciation, but uh, here you can see uh, a general description of that uh, uh, particular species. And uh, you can also see a number of uh, terms have been highlighted on that page. Uh, 
for instance, at the top left there, we've got Gaster, and by hovering over that, we could uh, bring up a small um, uh, hint or definition of, as to what that uh, term actually means, and by then clicking on it, we can go through to the full definition page. Okay, I, I could easily go on much longer than this. I've only got five minutes, so uh, I won't go on any further. But uh, that's just a few of the key features of the uh, the scratch pads, and in this case, specifically scratch pads too. Uh, I'd like to also highlight a couple of uh, other projects that have been built on top of the scratch pads. In this case, this is actually a, a website uh, being run by the Chinese Academy of Science uh, in Beijing. Uh, and this is actually a, uh, I think it's a, a site on uh, uh, ferns, Chinese ferns, but uh, those of you with better ability at reading Chinese can probably correct me on that. <laughs> Paul, uh, pl please correct me on that. But... Okay, thank you very much, Paul. <laughs> I, I stand corrected. I'm a programmer. They're, they're plants. There we go. <laughs> But uh, th this site is actually built on top of scratch pads. Uh, they've, they've actually taken the site and, and added uh, Chinese translations for the site uh, and uh, mainly taken the features that we've already added to the scratch pads and, but just uh, made it work for them. Uh, I, can, I can sense Vince to my left, so I'm going to quickly rush on and uh, just talk about two other uh, projects, one of them being ScarabNet, uh, which is uh, run by Sasha Spector of the AMNH. And he's taken, again, scratch pads, but he's actually employed a development company, Trellon, in the United States to extend scratch pads and add specific features that are relevant to him that we haven't actually considered adding. Uh, we've also got Wild Donalds here. We've got the, the GBIF uh, MPT startup. Uh, this is, I think, this is the Costa Rican uh, uh, GBIF node, and uh, their, which is essentially a scratch pad, but it's now known as the Nodes Portal Toolkit. Uh, and they've got a number of specimens, and again, uh, exactly the same as or very similar to the, the standard scratch pad layout. And then finally, I, I could go on further, but I, I don't want to stand on the toes of uh, or st stomp all over the presentations of uh, the people that are coming up after me. But then the key thing to note is that uh, all of that, it's all open access, open source, and uh, all free. That's me, I think. Okay, thanks, Simon. Thanks very much. Thank so.